Welcome to Make Something with me, David Picciuto, and today we're going to make this motorized drill press table lift. Check it. It's got a lock on one side and then this crank on the other side. The plan is to get a drill attached to this with a forward and reverse button out front. So I'm going to take apart this old DeWalt drill and attach a PWM device to it to see if we can use the motor for this guy. The motor inside this drill is a DC motor. We're going to hook a PWM up to it so we can have forward and reverse and a variable speed. That's going to be plugged into the wall. What comes out of the wall is AC and needs to be converted to DC and that's where this laptop charger comes in handy. I don't know anything about electronics so I'm not going to show you how you wire this up but you should be able to figure it out pretty easy. There's only a couple wires. Turn the knob. Reverse. Yes! Yes! I need to figure out a way to attach this to the drill. This is over half inch, so the chuck does not fit on there. So Dan came up with the idea of taking a pipe that fits over there and if we take a piece of scrap sheet metal and then weld it on the inside, it should fit over there. And then this flat piece will fit over the flat part of this rod sticking out. To weld that in there, I'm going to cut a little slit so I can weld from the outside and not interfere with the inside. So now that that fits over top of that, we need a way to get the drill attached to this. I have this guy, which is an adapter for a drill to use a socket set. And this almost fits into there. So I think I can just kind of pound that in there and we should be set. I got this flex shaft so I can bring out the components out here. This rack right here moves when I move the table left and right. So we can totally bypass that whole lock system by just locking this guy into place. And I think we can do so with some hose clamps. So if the drill's here, this is going to be about right here. This needs to be mounted somehow right here. Now, let's go mount this up. So if we can go up, we can control the speed. We got off and we can go down. So this is the knob that came with the potentiometer. Yeah, it's pretty ugly. So I'm gonna draw one up in Fusion 360. I'm gonna sort of base it on this base amp knob. I'm gonna leave the design process and the 3D printing up on the screen while I talk about today's sponsor and that is Squarespace. Like me, many of you are makers and you want to sell your services and the things you make online. If you do so, you need a website and Squarespace is the perfect solution for you. All of their templates are absolutely beautiful, modern and built with the latest web standards. That means they are naturally SEO friendly without plugins. I myself was a professional web developer for 10 years, so I know that lean, efficient code is essential to get found in the search results. So you won't have to worry about any of the back end and can focus solely on you and your business. Most people are viewing websites on phones these days and Squarespace sites are responsive, meaning that it resizes to any size screen, keeps your branding and looks great on mobile phones. You can sell an unlimited amount of products on your site, both digital and physical. My website, makesomething.com, has been a Squarespace site for over two years and I love it. It looks great and it helps me sell my plans, books, and merchandise. Visit squarespace.com for a free trial and when you're ready to launch, visit squarespace.com slash makesomething for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. All right, thank you Squarespace. Now let's finish up this table lift. All right, so this one is all done. So it puts on an extra layer so it sticks to the bed. Otherwise, it'll pop off and it'll make spaghetti while printing. So I'm gonna go sand this off. Miscalculated the hole. It's a little, little too tight. So I'm just gonna take a drill and drill that out. 
And then we're just gonna fill the top part with epoxy and we'll just let that sit and dry for a few hours. So now that we got the table working, I'm gonna head to Kencraft to get a nice piece of walnut for the grill. And of course I could just cut this rectangle out on the table saw, but I got a CNC, so why not get fancy? So I'm going to use it to make some decorative grill lines on there and then cut the outer shape. So I got this guy all cut. I had this piece of aluminum here that I wanna put on the back just for some extra sexiness, but I also want it to sit flush with the back. So I have a rabbiting bit in my router here and we're just going to run this over there. Cool beans. So we got that sanded nice and smooth and I'm reintroducing a scratch pattern in there to give it that 70s stereo console look. Since we use the CNC to cut the grill and we use the 3D printer to print the knob, we're going to use the laser to etch the label. gonna hot glue this plate in and if that doesn't hold we'll put little clips on the back here now we're going to screw this on with pocket hole screws and they'll be exposed and I'll give it a, a cool look One of the reasons for doing this was to make the base a lot easier to move up and down. Ever since I added the table and the fence, turning that crank became very difficult, even more difficult than it was before. And so now I have all the controls right here in the front. I do have a video of me making this tabletop as well as the cabinet and drawers underneath. There'll be a link to that up top as well as down in the description. This beautiful walnut came from my friends at Kencraft. You can check them out at kencraftcompany.com. Also, huge shout out to Cohen Designs over on Instagram. He heard about this on the podcast and reached out to me and gave me some huge helpful tips on how to wire up that drill. I do wanna say it does work a lot smoother when I have the drill in line. So I do think having this flex arm on there kind of, it, it, it makes it jumpy and jerky. I think I'm going to actually buy a motor and mount the motor right here so it's directly in line with the shaft. Yes, this does work perfectly fine as is. It's just not as smooth as I pictured it. I think it all has to do with that flex shaft back there. And every once in a while, depending on the position of this table, uh, the drill will stall and not move. I couldn't reproduce it on camera, but it does happen every once in a while. So I think mounting a motor directly on that shaft is gonna take care of all of that. I've gone ahead and ordered that motor along with a coupling, and if that works even better, I will report back to you guys and let you know. If you make something like this, make sure to not have any of your electronics below the spoil board here. You don't wanna drill in and electrocute yourself. This is something I don't normally do, but I wanted to give you a preview of next week's project. I took apart an old Nintendo Entertainment System. I've gutted it here, and we're going to make a brand new case. It's gonna look totally different. We're gonna do my own style with it. It's gonna be a completely different shape. I can't wait to show you that. So be sure you're subscribed and you've got those notification bells rung so you can be notified when that video comes out. All right, folks, that is it. We'll see you next week with the NES build. As always, be safe, have fun, stay passionate, and 
make something.